welcome. Thank you all for coming. Um, I want to sort of talk a little bit about what we're doing today, um, but first introduce myself and my, my co-host here. Um, I'm Ian. I am the uh, adult services librarian here at the Old Town Library with the Buda River Public Library District. Um, and with me is uh, Sochi Arellano. She, um, she is one of our amazing LAs and uh, we'll both be covering about half the presentation. So if you have any questions, go ahead and Zoom supports um, a Q&A feature. You can ask them in there. We've also got a chat um, and you can send um, questions or comments directly to our um, tech guru who's behind the scenes. So uh, without further ado, I suppose we'll just go ahead and get started here. Um, now this, our goal here is, is to introduce you explicitly to some of the technology that um, you might be using this school year with your kids. And we're not here to replace the, the school district by any means. Um, our hope is to introduce you to some of the new devices um, and new systems that, that are gonna be in place, including, um, if I can get my PowerPoint to work here, there we go. Including some of the new student laptops, the, uh, the MiFi, if you received one, Google Classrooms and Gmail, um, and then Microsoft Teams as well. And then Sochi will be covering Google Classroom and Parent View, um, and we'll open it up for, for questions at the end as well. So if you have any sort of school specific questions, um, we would advise you direct them to the teachers or to their amazing IT staff. Um, but for right now, we are more than happy to hopefully um, just introduce you to, to what we've got going on. Um, so first of all, we've got the laptop here. Um, it's pretty standard uh, Dell. It, you know, it's got the camera and the microphone, which are going to be pretty critical this, this fall. Um, the power button is right up on the right side. You've got your LED status lights, your keyboard, your trackpad. Um, you should have received a charger with it as well. And over on the side, on the top here, we can see an audio port and a USB port. And then uh, on the other side, we've got a power in and an ethernet port, um, HDMI port for if you wanted to connect it to a TV um, or an extra monitor, you can do that with the HDMI port or maybe even the uh, mini display port. Um, and then the ethernet port is for if you've got an ethernet cable that you connect to um, your router, if you're using one of those at home, um, you can get uh, direct internet and kind of bypass the Wi-Fi. So, that's a little introduction of the computer. And now I know not everyone necessarily got the MiFi, um, but for those of you who do, I wanna do a little introduction, um, hopefully explain how it works. Fortunately, they're super simple. Um, they've been really well set up. So to turn it on, you'll see the on off switch on the side here. You just hold it down for three seconds and then the light should come on. You can also hold it down for three seconds to turn it off as well. Um, nice, some, some nice congruency there. And when you turn it on, you'll see first the Wi-Fi name. Um, in our case, it's PSG213672, uh, very formal. And then it'll show you the name there and then the password. Um, we're lucky enough that our password is, this is your password, um, but your password might be a little different than that. Um, so I'd say go ahead and once you see those, most importantly, write, write them down. Um, just so you know exactly which one you're connecting to, that you're connecting to the right one. And then make sure you, you write your password down. Goodness knows there are so many passwords in this world that I can't keep them all straight myself. So it doesn't hurt to, to have a little sticky note with that password on it. Now, when you get onto the computer and when you turn it on, um, you're gonna wanna obviously connect to the Wi-Fi. So down in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see this little uh, kind of satellite dish looking thing. And that's, that's how you can uh, access your network. And once your MiFi is turned on, you should see um, it pop up in this list of, of uh, wireless networks. And then you can hit connect automatically so that if you turn your computer off and then turn it back on, it'll just automatically connect to that MiFi as long as you have it on. Um, and then you can go ahead and click connect to connect to it for the first time. Now, it'll have you enter the, the password there that you wrote down. So you'll enter that network security key 
and then press next. And from there, it might prompt you whether or not you want to make the, the PC discoverable. Just go ahead and hit no. Um, that's helpful for a little extra safety and security, um, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Just hit no once and you should be all set. And you'll see that it'll say connected. Um, now with the MiFi, you can connect up to five devices at a time, but the more devices you have, the slower it'll go. Um, just because if they're all connected and using the internet at the same time, um, you know, they all, they'll all kind of split the amount of uh, data that they get through there. So um, ideally it'll work best with one, but it should also work with five if you're in that position. And now we're going to talk a little bit about Microsoft Teams and Google Classroom. I'll be doing a quick overview of Microsoft Teams, and then I'll uh, transition over to Sochi, and she'll um, discuss Google Classroom and then logging into Parent View with you. So let me see if I can just change my screen over here. There we go. So this is Microsoft Teams. And you can see I'm a member of a bunch of teams because goodness knows there aren't enough ways to contact me. <laughs> but we're going to come down here to the Library Reading Club. And this is sort of the, the team we've created to kind of demonstrate some of what, what Microsoft Teams can do, can do. Now, you should see all of the teams that you're a part of in this screen. And so go ahead and click on the one you want to access. And you'll see this sort of dashboard here. Now, over on the left, we've got kind of our control center. You can see the different channels that are available within your team. Um, so we've got our general channel for everyone in the group. We've got, um, so here we've got a different channel for maybe a different book that we, we might be working with or might be discussing as, as part of the class. And then we've also got a hidden channel here that we can still see. You click on and it'll show up. Um, that'll cover book two for perhaps when we were to get there. Now, each of the teams has sort of a similar layout, a similar setup. We've got up at the top here are posts. So everyone in the team can, can create a post, um, can reply to other posts. You've got, it's pretty slick. You just hit the, the reply button down there. Go ahead and hit enter and it'll apply it to that post. You can you know, do all the things with emojis that you're used to. Um, you can love a post. You can like a post. You can dislike a post. Um, so that's just kind of a nice way to collaborate. Luckily, if you're mentioned in the team, um, you'll get a notification. You'll see notifications up here in activity. They'll show up in a, with a little red icon. Um, so that's the posts section. Files, so for that channel, you'll have the files that are available under the files screen. So here we've got class materials, for example, and then we could download the sort of summer educator's guide or just view the PDF straight in Teams, which is kind of nice. I hate, I hate it when you have a PDF and you have to download it to your computer and then open it up in Adobe and it's just a whole mess. So it's nice that it can just be right here. You can close it quickly and easily. You can also, um, create new documents. So a Word document, for example, um, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, um, you know, and there may be restrictions on that, but um, you can also upload external Word documents and that kind of thing um, that you might have available. If something should be showing up and you're not seeing it, you can go ahead and click this sync button and it'll check with the server to make sure that um, everything is up to date on here. We've also got these notebooks. Um, the notebook, chan the notebook uh, tab here is taking a second to load, but um, you can collaborate, work with, work on notebooks together, um, edit, add things, add photos, um, and you can open it directly in OneNote just to have more control, more um, availability. You can do open in app, and it'll take you to to OneNote here. Um, We've got the, the grades tab here, um, if that's something that you'll be using. Um, it's just right up here at the top, super easy, super handy. Um, and then we've got other things that we can incorporate. For example, um, 
a teacher might include a quiz here. Um, and for some reason, it's not showing up on my page. But um, everything you'll need to see will probably be right up here in these tabs. And each of these channels has their own tab as well. So the files in book one uh, would not be the same as the files in the general channel. So each channel is sort of its unique kind of, its unique sphere. Um, so if you've got a meeting or if you've got a class that you need to attend, um, we've got meet up here. You can schedule the meeting on your own, choose meet now. Um, that'll work well in, a, my computer doesn't have a uh, camera on it, so it's gonna ask me to download the app. Um, and you can see those meetings as well on your calendar. So for example, I've got chapter one book discussion here. Um, that's a meeting. And so it's tomorrow at 1130. And at that time, I can click on join Microsoft Teams meeting, and it'll pull me right into the lobby there with my camera, with my microphone, so that I can be a part of that. Um, let's see here. We've got our chat feature here. So you can send messages directly between people within your teams. And I've got a couple things um, that are a little more library specific that you won't have, but um, that's sort of the basic um, outline of, of Microsoft Teams. And uh, we'll see if we have any questions yet. And we'll also have time for questions at the end. Um, so if you don't have any right now, but, but do think, think of some as, as we go, uh, feel free to add those in. That is totally fair. Um, and with that, I am going to stop sharing my screen here and then um, send it over to Sochi, who will be telling you about Google Classroom and ParentView. Okay, so I am going to share my screen, maybe. All right, so we are going to take a look at, talk about Google Classroom. Um, before you do Google Classroom, you do need to have a Gmail account. Um, and to do that, you're going to go into your web browser, type in Google, and you'll see when you see Google, you will see Gmail at the top right corner. Um, go ahead and just click Gmail. That's going to take you to a little bit bigger. Um, that's going to take you to the sign-in. If you already have a sign-in, just go ahead and sign in with your Google account, with your Gmail account. But if you want, you can just create an account as well. Um, go ahead and click that Create Account button. And it's going to take you to um, how to create your account. Um, you're going to start with your first name, your last name, and you're going to put in a username. If for some reason that username is taken, which I figured a lot of usernames are really taken, because I tried a lot of different names, um, it will give you what's available um, right here at the in the middle of the page. Once you pick one of those, or if you figure out one that's not taken, um, go ahead and put a, a password and confirm your password, and then you can um, go to next. Make sure that your password has eight or more characters, um, letters, numbers. So here you are at your welcome page. Um, welcome to Google. Um, you are going to put in your month, uh, your birthday and your gender. Um, the gender is actually, you don't really have to put anything if you don't wanna share it. You, it gives you an option not to share. Um, you can put in a phone number, but that's optional. And you can put in a recovery email address, but that's optional as well. Um, once you get to the next page, you're gonna to get to the privacy and terms. So with the privacy and terms, uh, basically just read through it, make sure you understand, and you're going to click agree. Um, once you do that, you will be sent to your new email and your new Google account. So basically this is your Gmail account. Um, it's just like an email account. You'll have everything there for you. Um, the great thing about this is that, you know, you'll get have a new email account. If you have several, you'll have several more. Um, but you can also do Meet, where you can actually have meetings, you can join the meetings, and you can do Apple Hangouts. Oh, sorry, Hangouts. Um, Google Hangouts. Um, but if you want, uh, what we have right here in our waffle, you can click onto that, and you can choose um, several different things. 
one of the things we're going to choose, obviously, is Google Classroom. That's what we're going to talk about today. So go ahead and you'll click Google, Google Classroom, and it's going to take you to your students' class, classes. Sometimes you'll have one class, depending on the grade level of your student. You might have two, three, four, several different classes, depending on what they're doing. Um, take a look at that Google Classroom. Um, right now, I have two classrooms in here. At the top of the page, we do have a to-do, which basically is going to give you um, all the assignments for all the classes that your student has. In the calendar, if you view the calendar, it's also going to show you the calendar view, and it's going to all anything that you your student has assigned is going to be in that calendar as well. So you can click on either one to view any assignments. So we're going to go into Library 101. If you guys are okay with that, um, when you go into that, what you're going to see is a lot of different things. Um, this is what your classroom is going to look like, or the class is going to look like. Um, right here at number one, you basically, you can click any of this, it's going to show all your classrooms. If you go to the stream, I'm oh, sorry, two, it's going to be your current class. This is the class you're in right now. For three, it's the announcement page. Basically, you can stream, um, your teacher can stream any kind of um, assignments that they've posted, um, any anything that they want to put in there. Um, as far as number four, it's your classwork. That's probably one of the most important places that you will you will spend most of your time. You want to know what your child, your student's assignments are, that's the place to go. Um, five is the people, that's going to be the teachers and the classmates. Six is the waffle that's going to get you to the app directory. Um, seven is any kind of upcoming uh, assignments that will be due. So we have something that's due on Friday. We have something that's due on Monday. You can view all of them if you'd like. Um, eight is basically updates from your teacher. It's basically uh, they posted an assignment. Um, and so take a look at the assignment. So let's go in and go ahead and go into classwork from here. If you go into classwork, basically that's the top one. That's going to be where you're going to see all of your, your students' assignments. When you go into two, baby, basically that's going to view all of their work. You're going to be able to see the grades. You're going to be able to see if something has been assigned. You're going to be able to see if something's missing. Um, it'll be in there. Um, three is basically the Google Calendar again. Um, you can look at the assignments through that. And the class drive folder is where you're going to view any files that you have. Number five is the topics that are available. Some classes won't have any topics. Um, some classes will. So your, just remember that your student's page may look very different than this. Um, and if you have any questions, please ask your teacher, uh, your student's teacher, um, or go to the PSP tech help, IT help. Um, six is basically the topic headings. So you're going to look at books. We also have a library website here. Um, and seven is the assignment. If you click on the assignment, you're going to be able to view the assignment for that particular topic. Um, and eight is when it's due, due August 31st. So if we take a look at an assignment, you're going to go into the assignment. You're going to see you've got the library card. You're going to see what the value of points is, what the grade would be, what you want to try to your student is the, the top points would be 100 points. You'll see the due date right here is September 2nd. Um, and then you'll see the assignment. Sometimes um, teachers will add links. Sometimes they won't. It's up to it's up to your teacher. This is a great place for you to add a comment. Um, the class could add a comment or you can add a comment where the whole class can see it. You can also send a comment to your teacher privately. That's up to you or to your, your student can send them privately. One of the things that you need to take a look at is how to add and create um, your assignment for your teacher in Google Classroom. So you'll take a look at this. This will say your work, what is assigned, and you're going to click add or create. If you click mark is done and you haven't added anything, this right here will pop up. It says you didn't attach work for library cards, so your teacher will see that it's done. You probably don't want to do that. You probably want to do, make sure that your student is actually adding something. 
So when you go into Add or Create, you are going to see um, your work. And then Add or Create, you're going to see all the different ways that you can upload your assignments. So you can upload from your Google Drive, you can uh, send a link, you can also do a file, sorry, you can also add a file, but you can also create new things because of Google. So you can use Google Docs, slides, sheets, or drawings to add your assignment. Once you have your assignment ready to go, or your student has their assignment ready to go, please make sure that you turn it in. If it sits there, it will not um, go in. So make sure that you do press the turn in button. That is pretty much the basic of Google Classroom. Um, if you have more questions or if you're confused about something, then please communicate with the teacher. Um, you can also go to the PSD Community Tech Portal. Um, they have a link with Google Classroom on it and they have several um, places to get help. So you can do tech help, you can do call, you can email, and there's also technology tips. Um, the last thing I have is there's a video actually in that PSD tech portal that shows how to use Google Classroom for students. So that's, that's an amazing video to watch. Um, it's only five minutes. Take a look at it and it'll explain um, even more. All right. Does anybody have any questions? As always, just remember to ask for help. Um, if you can't figure out something, ask your email your teacher. Um, one of the other things that I want to um, say is that if you are a parent, have uh, email the teacher of your student and have them connect you to their Google Classroom. And basically what you're going to receive is emails from the teacher with all the assignments that they're going to have. So that's a really important thing to remember. Um, you will not be able to go in there to look at grades. Um, you will just get an email with the assignments. The way to look at grades, though, is parent view. So we have a little video for that. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, the video um, is in the PSD Tech, PSD Community Tech Portal. It's a great video. It's only five minutes, goes through a lot of stuff. Um, and there's a couple of other things in there, too, that will help with Google Classroom. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to try to find the video on the. Let's see, on Parent View. Welcome to another tech tip from Poudre River Public Libraries. Today we are going to show you how to navigate Parent View. After you log into Parent View, you will arrive at your Parent View dashboard. Your student's information will appear here. If you have more than one student, you can choose the account you want to view by clicking on their picture. The home page will show your student's school photo, ID, and name of the school they attend. We are going to click on My Account to select our notifications and preferences to ensure our information is up to date. You can modify your name, Go paperless for report cards. Choose to auto -not notify if your child is tardy or misses classes. You must click the box next to the attendance to receive messages if your child is tardy or absent. Below, you can add email addresses and phone numbers for notifications. The banner here on the left shows the different pages you can access on Parent View. If you have any notifications, they will appear in red next to the category. I'm going to click on Messages. This will take me to any messages sent by teachers. You can choose any message to read by selecting the mail icon or any part of the message text. The calendar page will allow you to choose what you would like to view. Assessments, assignments, holidays, and school events. You can also view by month, week, or day. You can even choose to show rotation day. The attendance page can be viewed in three areas. The calendar view, totals by course, 
totals by period. The calendar view displays a visual record of each recorded absence. The totals by course and period section display attendance totals by course and period. The class schedule lists the period, course title, room name, teacher name, and for some secondary schools, meet days. You can also choose the semester you wish to view. Send an email to your student's teacher by clicking on the envelope next to the teacher's name. The course history page has information about transcripts, current and previous grades, GPA, and graduation status. You can select detail at the top right and scroll down for different views of credits needed. Click an individual subject to display courses completed or in progress that will meet your credit requirements. Select detail in the student course history selection to display the grade earned and completed at PSD elementary, middle, and high schools. The gradebook page will show you your students' classes, teachers, grades in each class, and any missing assignments. Any missing assignments will be highlighted in red. You can email your student's teacher by clicking their name. If you click on the class title, you will see all the assignments on a different page. The student info page will show you your student's information, such as name, address, and phone number. You can also edit emergency contacts and add physician information. Your student's assessment scores are available here as well. If you would like to send an email to your student's counselor, do so by clicking the envelope next to the counselor's name. Please remember to download the student rights document and sign with exactly the same name and last name that the system recognizes. Thank you for watching this demonstration on how to navigate ParentView from the Pooter Libraries. Remember to download the ParentView app if you are interested. To watch more tech tips, check out the Pooter Libraries playlist on YouTube or visit our website at pooterlibraries.org. Okay, so that was Parent View. Pretty quick overview, uh, pretty easy to navigate. Uh, does anyone have any questions? And remember, if you don't want to ask a question today, that's fine, but you can definitely go to any of these PSD listed thing, uh, places to look to ask questions and always ask your teacher, your student's teacher, if you need any help. They are available to help you with everything that you need help with. And if anybody would like to ask questions about anything that they've seen uh, so far, please go ahead and put something into the chat and we can go ahead and answer those for you. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions yet, but I will let you know that we will be posting this video of the Zoom meeting um, that we're recording as soon as we get it fully edited up. I did just have a question pop up of any suggestions for a Chromebook. All the screens look different, at least for teams. Ian, do you have any suggestions for that? You know, with Chromebook, it can be a little tricky just because Google and Microsoft can um, sometimes not be the most friendly. Um, I may may defer over to Brian if, if he has any, any suggestions. Otherwise, I, I would suggest that um, your best bets to to give the student and family support line a call, um, send them an email, check out the tech portal. Um, they're super awesome. All right, hopefully you guys can hear me all right. Uh, my name is Brian Lamoureux. I work uh, in Pooter School District as the IT trainer. Um, so definitely can answer that. We actually just found out that uh, much to what Ian was saying, uh, Google and Microsoft are not playing nicely right now, so Teams is not real friendly on the Chromebooks. Um, so we are, we're working on some solutions for you guys. We'll definitely communicate with those as we learn more. In the, in the meantime, you're welcome to use any iOS devices or Android devices um, that you have that may be personal devices. They'll pick that up great. Uh, or if you end up with a PSD uh, desktop computer or, sorry, laptop computer, you'll be able to use that as well with no problem. Thanks, Brian. 
Okay, and I had one more question of any tips for getting the raise hand function to show in a Teams meeting when it has disappeared? That's a good question. Let me see if I can go back over to that Teams screen here real quick. Let's see. All right, can you see my Teams? So, Let's see, so when you're in a Teams meeting, um, the hand, boy, I may defer back over to Brian again. <laughs> see if he's got any advice. Yeah, so kind of interesting, if the hand ends up going away, um, you know, you have a few options. Number one, I would make sure that you restart the device. Um, that seems to be helping that out. If Teams tries to do its auto update feature and fails, it will actually revert to a previous version. And so sometimes we see some of those kind of, um, kind of cool things disappear, some of those features. And so by doing that restart, you give it a chance to refresh its cache and it will actually pop that back up. If you're continuing to see issues with that, uh, give us a call or email us and include a screenshot for us so we can see that. And we can actually jump on with you potentially if it's a PSD device and help you uh, kind of solve that. Brian is just evidence in the flesh of, of the amazing work that they're doing over there. And to that end, I do have one more question of with the teams not working well with Chromebooks, but if the person was issued a Chromebook for their first grader, um, should they just go ahead and call the family and student support line um, to try and, and uh, either get a trade out for a laptop or something different? Okay, so uh, Tillman, it looks like they, Brian would have you email that COVID Tech Help. So it's COVID Tech Help at psdschools.org. Are there any other questions? Yes, and Brian says we have other devices coming, but they are behind schedule for delivery. I would also suggest, um, I know that Brian had suggested this and Ian as well, um, to do the restarts. And just from um, experience, I would probably go ahead and when you are done with the machine at night, just to shut it down and then restart it in the morning. It seems to help quite a bit. Um, so I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. And I, I wanted to thank you all so much for coming. Um, a big shout out to Sochi, a uh, big shout out to Brian. Um, thank you both so much for being here and helping out. And um, like I said, they are, they are a great resource for um, all of your in-depth questions. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck during the school year. Thank you so much.